This is Shane from Everything in Slow Motion, and we're about to discuss metal? This is the Discuss Metal Podcast with Shane Oshner of Everything in Slow Motion. Hosted by Dan Terry, presented by DiscussMetal.com. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Discuss Metal Podcast. My name is Dan, and I am your host this evening. And pretty much any evening you're listening to this podcast. It's usually just me. Sometimes it's Joe, if you get lucky. But uh, tonight, uh, I am joined by Shane Oshner of Everything in Slow Motion. How are you doing tonight, man? Great. Great. How are you? I'm doing well. My kids went to bed on time, so we were able to do this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more oh, yeah, or, more yeah. or less on time. I mean, one of them might walk downstairs at some point. Like, is it time to wake up yet? Because if you do, uh, I want frosted flakes and um, yeah. and like I need you to cut an orange just exactly wow. the right way for me. Dude, to be able to do something on time um, with kids in the house, especially later at night, it's a uh, it's a victory, man. So my kids are still upstairs just hanging out doing their thing. So I wouldn't be surprised if. They came down here and started pounding on the door at some point. So it's all good, man. This is what we do. So. All good for sure. <laughs> well, the cool thing is, and we're gonna we're gonna circle back to this, but I want to throw it out there at the very beginning. Um, you have a new record coming out uh, the day before Halloween. Um, I think it's the day no, before Halloween. No, 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 is, October sixteenth. Hold on, now. Face down said, "Okay, hold on, hold on. I just I just read this. Hang on. <laughs> I mean, you know, like you're right, but I'm just." <laughs> I'm just double checking myself here. Edit. Try it again. Right. <laughs> Facedownrecords.com. You know what it probably is? I think of my pre because of my pre-order, it says probably ships by October 30th. By or October. Th- that's probably it. Also, thank you for pre-ordering. That's awesome. It'll it'll be the very first uh everything in slow motion that I have on vinyl. Really? Um, okay. You picked the best one, man. You picked the best one. Well, that's that's good to know. I just went for the standard black edition because I can't that's, be. That's it. I can't be bothered you know by anything I, that looks too cool. Because if I, I didn't do, even want color, I didn't want color. Yeah. Um, when we started talking with uh, um, face down about this, I was just like, I, I'm I'm bored of color. Uh, you know, just colored vinyl is just kind of like okay, like it it looks cool, all right. Like, but I, I used to be more excited about it, and now when I see it, I'm just kind of like, ah. Oh, Okay, well, um, but because of just everything looks so cool uh, on this record, everything looks really like classy and like clean. And um, we uh, uh, it's got this like old school vibe to it, um, which has a lot to do with the place that we we started recording it at um, this place called the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake, Iowa. And uh, it's that's actually the, the part of the room that's on the cover. Uh, of the album, okay. which is that weird, crazy four way mirror. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we wanted to do the labels on the vinyl um, to kind of mirror like the old, like 1950s choral record style uh, labels. And so we did that and it looks so cool. Um, and I was just like, this has to be on black vinyl, just black vinyl, no colored vinyl, black vinyl. And uh, Jim, the guy that was doing all of the, uh, Uh, design work and layout mock-ups and all that kind of stuff mocked up a colored vinyl just for the fun of it like and right away everyone was just kind of like okay actually that does look pretty cool so why don't we do that why don't we make the black vinyl just more limited you know make make it kind of cool and special and so anyways but yes so in my opinion i think you got the best one i think you i think you made a wise choice well i appreciate that i i love the cover too i think that was Really, I mean, I was going to pre-order the, like, you could have just wrote, like, everything in slow motion and white text on a black, you know, (laughs) cover, and I'd have been like, okay, cool. Yeah, like, as long as I like the songs, right? Yeah, Um, like a label maker. Right. Everything in slow, yeah. But um, I really like the cover. Whenever I first saw it, I was like, man, is this some kind of, like, unreleased, like, Starflyer uh, (laughs) cover? Yeah. Because it's got that, like... Yeah, yeah, Yeah. it's got, it's it's got that, um, it's, like you said, it could be, it's a record that, like, if you were if you were like going through like a, like a vintage uh, record bin, like a, you know, local thrift store or something, 
it would be a record that you'd have to like actually pick up and look at and try to identify what year it came out. You know, oh, it awesome. could yeah. have been anything anywhere, like you said, from between like 1950 to, you know, <laughs> something, something more modern. And with it being on the yeah. black, it's like equally uh, as that's mysterious. So yeah. That's so rad, man. Yeah. This, this place, the surf ballroom, it's in clear Lake Iowa, like I said, and um, it's just this incredible venue that still is standing. Um, you know, it, it, they've preserved it from uh, the way it was in like the 1940s. And when you walk in, it's truly a time capsule. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Um, and uh, I just uh, the first time I walked in there, um, I just had this feeling like we we have to do something in this room. We've got to start making our next record. We have to we have to do something to occupy this space. Um, and have this be a part of part of what we're doing. And uh, so I, I called the place and like random question, you know, like, hey, so I know this is super random, but can me and a bunch of dudes come in and and uh, make a bunch of loud music, you know, for like two days. And they were super cool with it and invited us in. Um, and I mean, really, like went all out, took care of us. It was awesome uh, the whole time we were there. And that's what we did, man. It's like we walked into this really crazy time capsule of a room spent a few days there and set up a bunch of microphones and drums and all that kind of stuff and started working on the record and uh like i said visually the place is stunning and um the cover uh that four-way mirror that's on the cover is actually in the women's powder room of the venue okay um and i i just the first time i walked into that room i was like oh my gosh <laughs> so like four people could do like makeup all at once i guess i mean yeah i'm assuming so so and it looks uh, cool let's be real yeah it just it, looks, it cool. looks incredible um and just the colors in that room and the wallpaper and everything that that's in there i was just like oh, i don't know what we're doing in this room but somehow this is going to be part of this record too you know and uh we actually ended up driving back there um, with our friend Lucas Carpenter, uh, photographer friend. Um, we drove back there uh, a while later and spent some time trying to shoot the cover uh, in that room. And, and we got it. And uh, when Lucas showed us that the first time, it was just like, holy crap, this is so rad. <laughs> it's like when you look at the cover, it looks like what I love about it is it's real. It's that's a real room you know, yeah. uh, somewhere not far from us. Um, it's a real room that exists and, uh, there's nothing, you know, photoshopped about it. Nothing. It's just, it's just this incredible room and this incredible photo. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's killer, man. So, well, and that's in contrast also to, you know, the previous album covers, uh, on the previous, previous releases, which were more, um, like pieces of art versus like a real life, you know, kind of, uh, yeah. kind of down to deal, but, um, if yeah, you don't Dave, Dave oh, go ahead. did all the, uh, Dave Quiggle did all the art, um, for laid low and Phoenix and red. Um, and dude, he just, he just killed that stuff. Uh, working with Dave is awesome. Um, and for this album, I just, I, like I said, I knew when we walked into that room, that there's just all right this album is going to be a lot of photography and yeah that's just how it has to be you know and uh i'm super glad that we did that so well we're going to circle back to the to the record here in a little bit but i want to do a little bit of like a time capsule um you know to use that word or maybe rewind the clock a little bit and um you know we've I, i've heard bits and pieces of your story um through different interviews and things like that but we haven't ever had like a um like a, a like a narrative uh, <laughs> i guess structure so what i want to do is is start the, you know start this line of questions as generically po as possible and just ask what got you into music um my parents uh well, my, my family uh you know my dad is a musician um my both my grandfathers were musicians um ooh, josh silbernagel is calling me drummer of hands gotta take uh, it gotta take it should i <laughs> you can we can pause no. no big deal no it's all good okay. um but yeah both of uh like i said my my dad is a musician um a killer musician 
uh, my grandfathers, both of them are musicians. Um, I just grew up around it and totally fell in love with it. Um, and, uh, I think, you know, uh, I, I was able to really find that, um, you know, when I, I think when I turned 13, uh, and I moved out to this small town in North Dakota and that's actually where I met Josh Silbernagel, the guy that just called me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, it was just like, oh, OK, well, there's another guy that's just as into this as I am. You know, it's just like really loves music and is a, a, a killer musician, you know, and, and we just want to do this together. And so we started our first band. And um, I mean, dude, from there, it's just never stopped. It's always been it's always been something that I've done. Um, but as far as like writing songs and really like digging into it, it was probably playing with Josh, you know, for that first time when I was like 12, 13 years old. And from that point on, it's just go, go, go. So, <laughs> right. So what with that first band, what what kind of music was that? What were you guys what were you guys jamming? Uh, we, <laughs> so we were both like part of our, our, our bond, um, when we met each other is that we were both exclusively into Christian music. Um, right. I had been into, uh, like, like we were both into like DC talk and audio adrenaline and, um, we both kind of had that background. Uh, but at the time, um, you know, 1999, I guess, uh, we decided to start a like Christian rap rock band. Like we wanted to be like the Christian limp biscuit. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then pillar came along and beat us to the punch. Um, but, uh, really pillar, not POD. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, POD did too, but pillar felt more like pillar felt maybe because pillar was less cool than POD. We could relate to it more. That's fair. <laughs> That's totally POD fair. Was super cool and like like ultra badass and everything they were doing sounded heavy and awesome. To where I don't think we like we loved it, but I think we just looked at it like you know oh, th- we don't have a shot doing this. But Pillar made everything seem possible. <laughs> sure, I always so, had a little bit of a for three eleven vibe off of uh, off of Pillar. Yeah, at dude, least earlier sure, on, yeah, you know. for sure. Um, but yeah, so we just did our our Christian rap rock thing um for you know a few years and then uh just kind of made our i think we we started going down the well of like solid state records and got into living sacrifice and the ludicrous oh, and yes. uh, that, that was a big one for me like the uh throwing myself album that the ludicrous put out yeah. and then uh yeah i mean and then bless the martyr came out and then uh, i mean from there it's just like all we want to do is thrash our guitars around and play heavy music, you know? So, and I mean, I, I don't know, like I, I got into more like really like metal stuff later on. Like I was super into between the buried and me and glass casket. And I mean, pretty much anything that was super heavy. Yeah. I went down that well for quite a while. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a, that's a transition that's always fun to talk about. Um, cause I grew up in that same, I grew up in the same culture as well. You know, we'll only listen to Christian music and, um, it's like that for a very long time. I think, uh, probably till about like 10 years ago or so, but, uh, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's weird how you'll start off with something like a, like a DC talk, which then leads to like, Ooh, how can we do this with like heavier guitars? And then you end up in, in POD yeah. color. And then before you know it, you know, the first time you hear something like Zayo, it's like completely, uh, completely mine like it just it like reprograms your brain kind of in a way yeah for sure yeah it's weird like i i had i definitely wore both hats to where i I liked i like you know i had all my christian music that i liked you know um and then at this very same time i was listening to like seven dust and system of a down and uh i mean i i just i just consumed music and but it seemed like i I don't know, like I related more with the Christian music as far as like having a mission, you know, behind our music and what we were doing. And and we were pretty passionate about that for a few years, you know, like like I said, when we were young teenagers. Um, but yeah, I don't know when we grew up. <laughs> right. No, I get you. 
Uh, so did this band, uh, the rap rock band, just tran- eventually ended up transitioning into Hands, or was it something that just kind of stopped and then you guys just started over with a whole new set of kind of influences? No, it just stopped. Um, you know, we kind of all, I don't know. Like, I, I guess when we were done doing that, um, I kept going down the heavy music route uh, with some other friends um, and got real serious about that for a few years. Um, probably up until I'd say like 2004 through 2007 was like years that I spent um, being, you know, touring and everything else and being real serious with a a band that was similar to like, I don't know. Um, it was just kind of (laughs) chaotic, uh, like heavy music. And, uh, I mean, we were sending promo kits to labels and all of that stuff. And meanwhile, Josh, the guy that I was playing with uh, in the rap rock band, <laughs> um, just kind of took a different path and went went more towards, uh, you know, exploring different kinds of music and stopped playing music for quite a while. Um, and so when we met up in 2000, maybe late 2007, I was out of this other band and he was just coming home from uh, being gone working, um, you know, at a different part of the state, uh, for a long time, we just kind of came together and we were like, Hey, we should, we should do music together again, you know? Uh, and that was kind of the birth of hands. So, and and it was cool because it was kind of like, I still, you know, I really want to do the heavy thing. Um, and uh, the band that I was in was, was technical. Like it was, it was heavy and metal and very technical and chaotic at the same time. Um, and, uh, Josh didn't play that. that. That was not his thing. It's like, Hey man, I haven't played drums in a long time. Um, and I just want to play rock and roll, you know, or whatever. So it's like the hands sound kind of comes from, yeah, I guess just, you know, uh, it's, it's heavy, but it also has a, a rock element too. That's, um, very present. And, uh, I think when you listen to the early, like the very first hands EP, there's definitely a lot more like metal happening in my opinion. Like there's like little, like slightly like techie, cool sounds, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and when everyone wanted to be misery signals, uh, we've all been there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, uh, but anyways, um, yeah. And then, and then, uh, I started getting more into bands like cult of Luna and ISIS and stuff that had a slower tempo um and it was just all about creating like a giant ambient riff and ambient vibe and and obviously hands kind of picked that up along the way and started you know the tempos were slower and the songs were longer and um and yeah so yeah i think the first i think the first time i heard hands uh was the uh the sounds of the earth record Oh, that's cool. And yeah, there was a long time. There was a, shoot, shoot, it was a long time ago now. But it's just uh, like a handful of people that know about that record, which is a shame. Yeah, I'm actually gonna dig into that a little bit more too because it's it's. I don't want to say it's my favorite Hands record, but it's the first one that I heard. So every every time you hear a record for the first time, you hear a band for the first time, you're always gonna associate that first record with oh my god, yeah. oh my god, nostalgia. And uh, and I remember showing it to a buddy of mine uh, whose name actually is Buddy uh, on, his, <laughs> <Nice. laughs> on his birth certificate. Uh, but like, I think what was interesting about it is that he was like, you know, oh, well, what is this or whatever? And I was all like, oh, it's this band called Hands. And we were always listening to um, we were always listening to like, like, like you were talking about, like techie, heavy bands fast, in your face, you know, all, all screams, polyrhythms, yeah. you know, all, all this crazy stuff. And I was like, Oh, check this out, man. I was like, I was like, these guys sound like it's like, a, it, it's like if, uh, if a band like ISIS started playing like Christian music, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to avoid to say that I'm trying to avoid the generic. Hey, it's like the Christian ISIS. Cause oh, it wasn't God, that. I mean, worst. yeah, I mean, it wasn't <laughs> that, it, but it was in, it was in a similar style. You can't help if you're in yeah, the same yeah, genre yeah. as, you know, somebody else. And, uh, and we started listening to it and, um, and and really really got into it. We actually uh, we actually referred because I don't think we I don't think anybody said post metal back then. Maybe they did, but we certainly didn't. Uh, <laughs> so we no, started. I, don't know. I never kept track of any of that. We started calling it doomcore. 
uh because uh-huh. we were like because we're like yeah, it's like hardcore but it's also kind of like doom metal and that it's like slower and uh and more textured and but like somehow more heavy because it's not super fast you know yeah um and, and and all of that and there's a there's a song on uh sounds of the earth called hope that yeah. um yeah that was <laughs> this is uh i did this interviews with you it's not about me but there was there was this really funny uh it was not funny but i had just gotten married i got i got married in 2008 and um my wife and i had been together i guess had been had been married for about nine months or something and uh at the time i was like super 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 bad with money like mm-hmm. super bad like just you know let's go out and eat every night you know we'll we'll go to yeah, the bar dude, have a couple the of drinks of my marriage for sure yeah dude and i had like um i think we had like a couple couple thousand dollars in the bank um that we had gotten as wedding gifts and presents for and dude i just blew through all that money like, yeah. like real bad, but I was working a job where I was supposed to be getting this like huge bonus and the bonus was supposed to be like for like five grand or something. And so I was like, whatever, I'll get my bonus. This is like totally Clark Griswold, uh, type of thinking where it was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to get this money and it's going to make up for the money that we blew through and I'm going to have more on top of it and it's going to be all be good. But, um, you know, if you're reading between the lines, uh, that did not happen. Uh, I ended I remember a manager calling me into the office and being like, yeah, they're not paying out bonuses this year because like the market crashed that year. And it was like hard for everybody. And my wife was actually, she's an artist. And so she was, um, she was out doing an artist in residency uh, at a national park. I think it was in uh, Arkansas. And um, she had been staying there for like a week and I had just gotten this news and I was supposed to go down and visit her. Um, like a day or two later. So like I remember driving, it was like a four hour drive uh, from here in St. Louis and I was driving down there and I was listening to the sounds of the earth and that song hope came on and I had to like pull over dude. Like it was oh. absolutely like one of the, cause I had, I had to tell her all of this stuff that she was completely in the dark about, you know, like thinking everything's yeah. all good. She's out like doing her, like living her dream, doing her thing. And, um, and, and here I am like, you know, about to show up and be like, yeah, I know this was supposed to be like a really beautiful time for you, but I'm going to just like ruin it. And so it definitely, um, it was bad. <laughs> it was really, really bad, but that song hope and that album, the sounds of the earth was like 90% of the reason why I'm even still like <laughs> sticking with it. Like I, it was one of those, like, cause I was going to come down and make a bunch of excuses and do the thing that guys do, you yeah. know? And uh, yeah. after after hearing that, I was like, after hearing that record, like driving through, like I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna come clean with all of it and hope she wants to stay with me after all of it, you know. Dude, um, but that's, that's wild, man. But that song, hope, man, that song still like will will uh, shivers down the spine and everything. And even though it's like, wow, I know it's basically just like the same, like the same riff played over and over again, and there's just talking <laughs> over it, you know, but. Yeah. Uh, but, but for what it doesn't even sound like the rest of the record like at all but uh yeah. i don't know that one that one always really stood out to me so like yeah. that's i think I, that's I, I think that's important though i i think that's important to to know is that it it doesn't it doesn't matter that it's the same riff over and over again or that it doesn't sound like everything else on the record or that it it doesn't matter the song is a is a great song and it spoke to you and i think that's important and i think um, you know, I don't know, dude, I think, I think that's, that's important for people to, to, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess maybe it's not important to some people, but it's important to me. So, uh, so thank you. Thank you for that. I think that rules. Yeah. So. Thank you. We're still together. We have all the children, uh, <laughs> <laughs> four, if not four and counting. I think we're done, uh, after, after four, that's, that's quite a bit, but uh, but yeah, so I mean, obviously, I was a fan ever since. Um, yeah, dude, that's and, a great record, man. Uh, it's it's my favorite hands record. Um, I mean, I've I've got a very deep personal connection with "Give Me Rest." Yeah. Uh, just I think it's it's a record I'm super proud of, and and I, uh, it was kind of this weird like <laughs> weird circumstances that I had to be in um, to do it. Uh, but the sounds of earth is just very special. You know, that, that was, that was to me, some of my, maybe the, the best moments of writing music, you know, with my friends 
Um, and, uh, I don't know. I just, I think it's such a cool record. It's like, it's very like we wrote that thing out in a farm shed out in North Dakota, middle of nowhere, yeah. North Dakota. Um, and we, you know, for the entire month of August, 2008, uh, we we quit our jobs at the beginning of the month because we're like, okay, we're going to do hands full time and we're all just going to be irresponsible here, quit our jobs, make a record and go hit the road. And if we fail, we fail and whatever happens, whatever, like it, yeah. it's all good. Um, so we quit our jobs and decided that we were going to drive out to this farm, which is about a 35 minute drive um, every day, you know, Monday through Friday. And this was going to be our new job. And we were going to spend from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. or whatever out there the entire month of August. Um, and it was just super cool because we did exactly that. And what I love about that record is from the the, the track sequence is, act, I mean, it's in the order that we wrote everything. So song one starts with just this like oct this octave guitar thing that's just like standing by itself mm -hmm. and it's one note that probably lasts for you know the entire song yeah <laughs> but it, that was it we all plugged in our stuff and day one you know the beginning of august we're all standing out there staring at each other like all right well this is it and i just take that little guitar part and just start going -na 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 you know and then Josh comes in with this weird little drum fill thing. That's like, okay, all right, we're getting it started now. <laughs> and that's why that whole song is basically two notes. I mean, it's just like super repetitive and it just sort of builds. Um, but I mean, dude, from top to bottom, that's exactly how we wrote that record. We just jammed um, and we didn't overthink anything. And, and it turned out super rad. It did. It really did. I mean, it's what I like about that record the most is that it's so uh, it's eclectic in the sense that there's a there's almost elements on that record that you can kind of find in the rest of the hands releases and even some of the everything in slow motion stuff. Um, 100%. Yeah, like there's it's almost like that's the grab bag of like these are the instruments that I'm going to use creatively and basically it's almost like you have that that record as it as it kind of starts off the career and then you can pull you know e each element that's on that record kind of gets expanded on later yeah. on in the career and that, that that's the thing that i think is really cool in listening to the records uh, i listened to all of them uh last week and then i listened to the everything in slow motion stuff this week and um yeah and like i can hear that i didn't i didn't really even pick up on that before and I just thought that that was cool. And obviously it's not intentional, right? Cause like, you're just sitting there and you're like, okay, we're going to write this record, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and it turns out to kind of have this kind of special place. And yeah, I do. I, the question I had about that record is, is why isn't it more, uh, more readily available? Like for people to stream. Cause like I had to rip it, uh, I had to rip it, uh, to digital, but I'll only, I only have like, um, the CD and then the digital yeah. versions. Uh, do you have the CD? You do have. A I do have CD? the CD. Okay, cool. I'm not going to tell uh, you how much I paid for it because I didn't uh, have. I didn't have a legal copy of it the first time I heard it, but um, it's hard to find, dude. Um, it's uh, so the story behind that album, uh, and I'll just keep it brief. Is sure, sure. We signed um, a deal with uh, this this uh, this dude out in California. Um, obviously not face down, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, a different California label. Um, and I mean, I mean, we were just, we thought it was a, a, a good opportunity. Um, we were, we were young and didn't really see any of the red flags and just, it was a one album deal. So we thought, why not? This guy had good credit, um, a long history of releasing, you know, great bands. Um, so it seemed legit, uh, and I think it was legit. Uh, we went and rec started recording the record and things got dicey, um, you know, kind of towards the end of making the record. Um, and he started to, you know, we weren't at the, by the time we were done recording, we weren't really sure if he was even still on board. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, and uh, and the bill's going to have to go to somebody, right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. We're just I mean, we spent two weeks at the studio and I just remember being like, um, Who's going to pay for this? <laughs> and uh, anyways, it got taken care of. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we had face down, um, we were talking to face down at that same time, um, about working together. And so as soon as we got done with that recording, the sounds of earth record, um, we were already, we just kind of knew that like, okay, this record will come out, um, whenever this guy puts it out. Um, and we're on to bigger and brighter things, you know? Um, and it's, it's, it's insane because, we wrote that Sounds of Earth record August 2008, and then we immediately started writing the Creator record in like October, November. I mean, so we wrote two full-length albums within a span of a few months, and I mean, to me, that's that's wild. Like, just when I even when I think about this last record that Slow Motion just made, I'm like, dude, <laughs> <laughs> like this is taking forever, you know? And I just can't imagine us like especially the way we were writing back then it's like we weren't really using any uh great tools to do so other than um you know just jamming with a drum set and a guitar rig in a room and pushing record on this little like you know cassette recorder thing yeah and uh so it's it's crazy we got through it but um yeah that record came out um february 2009 and we were already on the road um I think we were we were on the road on our own tour and then we started a tour with War of Ages in March like out to Face Down Fest. So uh this record comes out um February something 2009 and it's on the shelf for about a month. And all of a sudden our this label guy and distribution and everything just drops off the face of the planet. Oh my goodness. Um no contact with them. Um, no email response. The record is no longer online. Um, I mean, literally all we have is the box of CDs that the distribution plant sent us. And I mean, I think at the time that was, I don't know, not a lot, maybe 200. Um, and we sold out of those cause we were touring. So we, we sold out of them very quickly and then the record was just gone. And I'm in, I'm serious when I say it was gone because <laughs> it was gone. It's like we uh, we never heard from this guy. We never got the record back. We never um, it never surfaced online again. Um, other than you know years later when I think the that particular distribution plant closed down, they may have put a bunch of them on like eBay. I don't I don't really know. I think that's how I ended up getting mine. I either bought mine from somebody that had bought it yeah. from a show or somebody yeah. that had uh it's already you know from one of these plants or whatever but they definitely yeah. knew what they had uh it so was it just was, gone yeah, yeah. And, and it's it was such a freaking bummer and i'm telling you man i think that heartache gets worse every year for me like <laughs> you know like at first it was just kind of like oh that sucks you know what a freaking bummer and you know we we're really proud of this record and, and that i think that's what sucked the most is you know, i just got done telling you that i think it's my favorite yeah hands record and um and like i said every year that goes by i'm just kind of like so bummed that that album is not available and that that album is not on vinyl and that yeah i mean that that out of any record i've ever made that album deserves to be on vinyl and it's not um i think it's a bummer so i i don't know man i i don't know this uh, I don't know if it'll ever resurface. Um, I don't have a clue, but it's a shame. So, absolutely, yeah. I I apologize. I did not mean to rip that scab wide open, but um, no, it's it's totally okay. I'm not like crying yeah. over it. It's just like you know, it just totally sucks that that that's a that's the situation. So yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Well, so then you know, you guys signed to Face Down, and um, I love the story that you told on as the story grows about how like you had a whole conversation with Jason, just like totally chill or whatever. Didn't yeah. tell him you were in a band didn't do you know, any of that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then he like, basically it, people like his bands were like handing, <laughs> handing him, yeah. handing him music from you. And he's like, why, why on yeah. earth did you not just tell me that you know <laughs> that you were in yeah, a band or whatever? It's so cool. Um, honestly, I didn't, I didn't have any like motivation when I first walked, up to him uh, it was at cornerstone festival um i just knew that i'd followed face down um i was a big fan of like nodes of ranvi i think 
I think Nodes, their self-titled, is my favorite album ever released on Face Down. It's a perfect record, dude. Yeah. It is uh, an absolutely perfect record. Totally. And, um, you know, our, our, it's uh, it's funny. The guy that recorded The Sounds of Earth, his name is Mike Dresch. He's in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He's the one that recorded that Nodes self-titled. He's he's okay. the guy. Um, so that I mean, that's why we went to him in the first place is we're just like, well, this is the dude that recorded notes. <laughs> right, right. And then, you know, he became a, a great friend. And obviously just he did such a great job on that record. So uh, he recorded creator, too. Um, and uh, but yeah, I, I, I didn't have any crazy motivation walking up to Jason. I just knew like, oh, that's Jason from Face Down Records. And uh, I just. I don't know. I went up and talked to him. I think we were talking about like Johnny Cash and whatever. He actually he actually sent me a Johnny Cash book um, that I've had since, uh, and I'm actually reading it right now. <laughs> now hold on. Is this I, like a you borrowed the book from him and haven't returned it, or he gave you no, the book? No, no. He gave it to me. <laughs> it was given to him by a friend, and then he kind of passed it along to me. And um, maybe I'll give it to someone else someday. But I, I haven't had it in me to let go of it. So sure. But. Uh, Anyways, yeah, we just started talking and I, obviously it crossed my mind in the conversation like, well, I'm in a heavy music band and I could probably tell them about that right now. It obviously crossed my mind that I could mention um, that we would probably fit the bill, you know, but um, I mean, I would imagine that he had heard that eight million times that day alone. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's just kind of like, I don't know, this isn't I don't want to be that guy, you know, like, it's just whatever, man. Like, it's was, it was just cool talking to him. And yeah, it was a crazy coincidence that, you know, two and a half weeks later, we'd end up at a different festival and he pulls our EP, you know, from the from behind the table. And he's like, you didn't tell me you were in this band. And I was like, whoa, where did you get that? You know, and <laughs> yeah, it was kind of cool, man. It was, it was a really cool, uh, cool way to get introduced. So. That is cool. And obviously it was uh, a, a good partnership as uh, here we are in 2020 and still doing stuff oh, with dude. face down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's just such a like a great friend, you know, I mean, it, it, it was it was obvious that that was the case uh, right away. You know, like I said, when he gave me the book and everything else, it's just like, OK, me and uh, I'm going to be friends with this guy for a really long time. Um, but, you know. It's just like everyone with face down um, is so great and have become great friends that at this point, it's just like, well, yeah, like if you guys want to put out the music, then frick, yeah, let's do this. You know, <laughs> like it makes sense. Well, and that's that's the interesting kind of kind of part in the journey. So like hands was, you know, obviously, at least in the beginning, a, a kind of full time touring yeah. band like a for real like face down band in the sense of uh yeah you dude. know those bands worked hard you guys worked hard you're touring all the time uh at, at what point does does burnout start to set in um not long after we started touring uh and i mean a lot of it just like you know i was just thinking back when we were touring gas prices were at like an all-time high this this was like 2000 2009 2010 almost up um, to like $3 I think Well yeah it, it's funny I, I was actually uh just I was watching this old video from Hands touring in 2008 and someone in the van is like what's the gas price today and we were in the Midwest you know we were in like Iowa or something and it was $4 I mean dude it's like if it's $4 here then it's six dollars in california or i mean it's just i remember you know financially it was so hard um during those days and uh i mean we weren't a band that was pulling people you know we or we we'd have you know we'd play some really great shows but a lot of the great shows or a lot of shows were just a handful of people maybe you know i can yeah. recall two times we drove you know eight hours to a venue loaded in and no one showed up um loaded there. out moved on and it's just kind of like it's one of those things that you can't really be mad at it like every band has been there i think you know it's like we've all kind of been down that road yeah totally <laughs> and uh but i think what made it you know even harder for us was just like you know we just wanted to we were a band that had a, a message right like we i think lyrically i was definitely in a spot 
where um, now I'm definitely like pouring out my myself spiritually. And, uh, you know, but I mean, we just wanted to to just give our art to people and travel around and meet people and play rock and roll. And um, and that was it. And we found ourselves in a weird situation where, you know, we're playing with all of these, like, I feel like the, um, uh, it was kind of the peak of like this kind of militant Christian attitude, especially in like the kind of hardcore metal scene. Um, and we were just kind of in the middle, all of it, in the middle of all of it. And, uh, that just was not our bag. That wasn't our thing. And it was, it was very taxing on us. Um, and very, uh, exhausting and i think you know at some point we kind of um i think we had just gotten off of a really terrible terrible tour <laughs> um and we actually we actually left the tour um halfway we left we left in the middle of the tour um because it was it was so bad that it's like at some point you're just you're asking yourself like what am i doing you why know? am i doing like, this to myself yeah i you know i mean yeah i'm willing to you know pay my dues or whatever but this is just complete insanity, like what we're doing right now. And so we left this tour halfway through, um, you know, we, I think our, our halfway point was Wichita, Texas. And we knew that we could either continue the tour and go all the way out to the East coast, um, and have it be a miserable train wreck, uh, or take advantage of being, you know, in Texas and being a little more central, um, and just straight shotting it back to Fargo and Fargo, North Dakota. And, um, a lot of the places that we actually did pretty well were right up that alley. So, uh, you know, places in Oklahoma and Missouri and Iowa and South Dakota. And so we just booked last minute gigs, um, all the way home. And it was the best decision we had ever made because in those like four or five shows, we made more money and had better shows than we had had, you know, on the last two tours combined where we were just out in the middle of nowhere doing whatever. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, um, regret doing any of that. We met a lot of really cool people during those really terrible tours, um, and played a lot of really meaningful shows. Uh, cause the people that were there really were there to see us and really liked us. And I, I think it's awesome that they had an opportunity to, to get in the same room and enjoy the music and come and hang out and, you know, um, but man, after that tour, we were done. Like I remember Josh called me and it was just kind of one of those things where we both knew what that phone call was about and it wasn't a struggle. It was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, dude, I feel you. Like, yeah. let's please be done with this. Um, we had one more tour on the books with like in the midst of lions, a hope for home. And those are all our buds. So it was just kind of like, this makes sense. Like, let's go out and have fun with these guys. Um, you know, and then let's just put a cap on it. And that's exactly what we did. Was that, was that prior to my timelines are a little screwed up when I'm thinking back that far? Was that before give me rest or was yeah. that after? Okay. Because one, yeah, one, uh, oh, one of the one of the rumors was oh go ahead oh sorry one of the one of the rumors uh, that people always say is yeah that record is called Give Me Rest because they were just so tired of <laughs> doing the band yeah. at that point I was like yeah I'm sure that's not really what it is but <laughs> yeah it's oh it's not far off so it's not far off um, you know uh, Give Me Rest was a bonus record uh, really it, it wasn't supposed to happen um, we never intended it to happen uh, we just when we got done with that last tour, we called, um, I called Jason at face down and said, Hey, like we're, we're done, which I know is a bummer. Um, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I hope you didn't lose too much money on us. You know, like I hope sure. everything's okay. Uh, and I mean, meanwhile, for today's putting out breakers. So money's not an issue. Um, right. Right. But anyways, uh, you know, I just, I felt bad having to say like, Hey, we're done, you know? And, um, he was really cool about it. And, and what got me is he's just like, well, you know, if you guys want to do another record, you should do another record. And I'm just kind of like, yeah, but we're not, I mean, we're done, you know, we're not going <laughs> to, cause if you're going to put on another record, you have to tour it and you have to support it, you know, and you have to do all those things. And we're not, we're not doing those things. And he's just like, nah, man, just trust me. Like if you guys want to make another record, I'm here for it, you know? And 
Um, so I, I took that back to, uh, the guys and I said, Hey, like this is on the table. What should we do? You know? And, um, I mean, eventually we came around to just like, let's just, we don't know when we're going to have this opportunity again. Like, let's just make another record. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I think he goes up again. No, it's um, all good. Yeah. Nobody was talking when it happened. So it's all good. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're, we're, we might not have this opportunity again. So let, let's just make another record. You know, why, why not? Um, and I had a lot to say at the time. I mean, I was very angry, you know, when, when we came off the road, um, and just beaten up and, uh, you know, I, 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 I didn't really, I didn't really think I was in that bad of shape, you know, and then I started writing lyrics for that record and it was just kind of like, Oh, there you are. <laughs> Anytime somebody opens up a record with, I can't believe this is me. <laughs> you know, rough. something's yeah. Yeah. It was something's rough, up. dude. So, but it, you know, uh, man, super proud of that record. So it's, it's killer. And it ended up being kind of, you know, the, the, uh, defining album for hands you know totally. and which which is great i'm super stoked on that and people related to it and you know it's, it's special to a lot of people and i again it's kind of going back to discussing hope you know the the song hope from the sounds of earth it's just like you know it's it's just a a cool album that people are that people find special and it's met them somewhere in their lives. And, and that's super rad. So totally. So after that, you know, uh, you put out, give me rest. Um, everybody says it's the greatest album in the world. Uh, after yeah. it comes out outsold for today's breaker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, it's, 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 it's incredible. <laughs> no, I was, I was like, right. Yeah. I'm just going to skip over that part. Out, oh. Outsold sleeping giant. Yeah. Outsold, outsold impending doom. Yeah. Um, outsold war of ages. We went back on tour, got, yeah. got a Grammy. That's what, you know, <laughs> I had to go, I had to go through eight publicists to get this interview, you know, like yeah, it's, it's true, man. It's true. So, but no, yeah. So that, yeah, that came out and actually it was, it was our most like commercially successful album, you know, like it was just, everything said you guys should definitely go back on tour and we just kind of left it in the dirt like nah man like it's a cool record and we're fine with cutting it off here and eventually we went back years later and made like a two song ep but you know yeah and i think um you know and for a lot of a lot of people that i talk to on this show this is where the interview's over you know where we're like yeah and that was it and uh every now and again we talk or maybe we're gonna do a, a re reuniting tour or whatever but it yeah. seems like, you know, the creative process for you, it just wasn't, I think in that other, in that interview I listened to today, you said you just felt like you couldn't not make music, you know, like you couldn't just be done. Yeah. So before we know it, we're getting, I think, I think the first thing I heard everything in slow motion was, um, it was a two song. Is it uh, red and exosphere? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's um, the very first seven inch. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's funny because when I heard it, I didn't even know it was you um, because I just don't pay attention to things. It just comes on, you know, something comes yeah. <laughs> on and you hear it and you like it or whatever. And then I started listening to it and I was like, okay, hold on. I'm getting, I'm kind of, I'm getting vibes from this because it, I think at that point, everything in slow motion w- musically wasn't so different from hands that you no. wouldn't be able to no, tell. It, it, it was definite. I, I think if hands put out another record, I mean, it, it would probably sound something like that, you know? I mean that because that's that's, uh, I mean that's just the the season of writing and influences and everything else that that we were in, you know. I, and I think "Give Me Rest" brought a lot more uh, uh, melody and you know dynamics, um, and it you know obviously with everything in slow motion, like with that that red seven inch, um, it, it was even more so, you know, and everything was just slightly more refined in a way and so yeah i'm with you well and then you know i think um when phoenix came out i think that's whenever it started getting and this it's weird whenever i say this is where it started getting cool um because Uh i i that doesn't that isn't to say that the that you know what i heard before wasn't cool but you know i only had two songs before so to have the full you know to have the the full length um one thing that i really like about the transition that you've made from being an artist that was primarily known for making heavy music 
you know, um, and don't get me wrong, it was heavy music, but it always had other elements kind of kind of peppered in there. Um, sure. But instead of instead of the rock elements being, uh, you know, <laughs> a seasoning, now it's the main course, mm-hmm. you know, and um, to watch to kind of watch you kind of transition from heavy to um, to kind of a more rock and roll approach. Um, has been really, really cool. Like I said, like I, I think I, I messaged you a couple days ago and I was like, Hey man, I really, really dug the new song. Uh, it was not what I was expecting at all, but like in a good Mm way. Uh, (laughs) yeah, I I love that though. That's, that's, that's exactly what I want to hear. Yeah. Well, cause I've got this reputation for being a meathead and hating stuff for not being heavy or, or whatever, but it's also one of those, like, you know, am I going to bring, am I going to bring this guy on the, on the podcast and crap all over him? Because even though he's hey. given me how many heavy records up to this point, dude, you know, it's wait till the record comes out. You can listen to the rest of the record, right? Call me, call me back. And then you can, and then you can shit on me for not being heavy. Yeah. I could be like, dude, what in the world were you thinking? <laughs> no, no, it's cool. And like, I really, I, I really, really love the dynamics. And again, I hate, I hate to, I hate to keep throwing back that other interview, but I listened to it today and, um, and I, it was like from a couple, it was before late low came out actually, uh, yeah, I think is I when think that interview right was before that. Yeah. And, um, so that was like almost three years ago. My like, God, I'm times like flying by, yeah. but, uh, but you know, one of the things that you'd said is, you know, when you guys were recording that, um, the approach was, yeah, we're not making a metal record this time around. We're making a rock record. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like that's really carried over, but, um, yeah, well, and that's the thing is like, I never in my life have I ever said anything close to, hey, guys, we're making a metal record. <laughs> right. And so it's like definitely like the, uh, you know, the the heavy elements were there before, obviously, where you've got songs like uh, Water, you know, and Give Me Rest. That's just like everything is just these really aggressive, low, growly screams you know yells and every all the guitars are just drop tuned to nothing you know and it just kind of bashes you in the face the whole time um you know it's like that stuff felt right at the time um it felt natural and felt like it's what we needed to do and it's it's what we needed to do to get those emotions across you know um and i mean as an artist all these years it, it's just Every single time I gear up to do something new, um, it's just like challenging myself to to one be real honest with what I want to do and not pay any attention to what anyone else wants because um, that's not going to happen. That's not right. a that's not an expectation that I pay any attention. To. Um, and so in writing, I I love melody and I love guitar melody and i love big open chords and i love chimey guitar little you know patterns and i i'm just like i think that's been an obvious progression throughout the years i think phoenix was the biggest dose of just like oh whoa okay there's there's singing and there's way more dynamics in this you know there's more of a, a songwriting factor you know where things are there's actually like a verse and a chorus, you know, and and uh, and then laid low came out. And I think there's only one scream on laid low, you know, and, and that was just supposed to be purely like, let's just do something, you know, with melody. Let's take the, the writing approach completely different. Like, you know, instead, I think I'm just going to write all these songs on an acoustic guitar and then see how they translate um, rather than starting with a guitar on big distortion, you know, and and framing out a big drum track and whatever it's like let's just see what happens when we when we do it this way and uh um i don't know man i just i i think like that's been the goal you know is to just constantly be creative be honest um do the things that i'm i'm really in love with um so they they sound honest and and they tra- translate what i'm trying to say correctly you know I think if I tried to do anything other than that, it would sound forced and it would be, you know, it'd be st- stupid, I think. <laughs> well, like, yeah, yeah. With yelling, too, it's like with the screaming thing. It's like, you know, I mean, let's let's be real. Like the screaming thing really hasn't happened for seven years. Right. <laughs> and so um, it's like it's still 
it's still a way that I, I'd like to, um, you know, get it, get across some of these emotions, you know, um, cause it's effective, but it's like this new record, you know, it's like, I'm not going to scream or yell a damn thing unless it absolutely calls for it. Yeah. Like if there's no other way that I can say this line, if, if there's no other way that this line translates, then I'll yell my guts out and get, and get the point across. But if I'm just yelling a line to yell a line, like, what am I doing? You know, and I realized that, you know, for I think people that are fans of of this band from, you know, seven to 10 years ago, I, I, I understand if, if you're really into the heavy stuff, um, it's still there for you, you know, and I, I appreciate it. And I think that's awesome. But I'm certainly not just going to yell a line because there still needs to be this heavy element because that's BS. Oh, know? totally. So, um, yeah, man, it's I, I think that's just been the progression over the years. And the cool thing is I can look back on all of that. and I'm super proud of it all. And I feel those emotions and I feel where I'm at in life. And, you know, they, they're they're journals in a way, you know, and it's cool. And, and it just happens to be a, a extreme honor and um, privilege that there's people that care and and want to listen to it. Totally. And I think. I think the people are there for it. I mean, like every time there's an announcement, cause I mean, there, this has been, this has been hype. I'm, you know, I've been a member of that. There's a specific face down group on the, on Facebook. And, um, every single time somebody says everything in slow motion, it's like a flurry of, of, of just encouraging content. Like I've never, yeah. out of all the bands that I listen to, the, it's one of the only bands I see people talk about like on socials. Yeah. Where there's not just, you know, people, this band sucks or, <laughs> or, you know, he needs to go back and do give me rest part two or, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Or anything like that. Um, and so you've, you've, you've kind of escaped, uh, the fate of a lot of musicians who have, for lack of a better term, uh, toxic fans yeah, and dude, you don't, I, you don't I seem love, to have that, man. I've looked. <laughs> yeah. I love it, dude. I, seriously. I think people that the people that are fans of this band, um, or anything that I've been a part of, you know, uh, I'm just, yeah, I, they're the best. I'm super stoked, um, that uh, a lot of them have been long time supporters, you know, which really, really, really means a lot. And, um, and it's cool. Like they're kind of on this ride with me of just like, well, what can we do next? <laughs> you sure. know? And yeah, I mean, I think one of my biggest fears musically is putting out you know, two records that sound the same. It's just, I think that would be awful. <laughs> so, well, yeah. And it's a, it's a damned if you do damned if you don't. Right. Cause there are tons of bands out there that just put out the same record over and over and over again. Oh, well, for sure. we yeah. may have mentioned one of them already, but I'm not going to say who it is, but like, it's, <laughs> it's definitely like that. And for whatever, for some bands, it totally works for them. But I found over time that, you know, if you put the same record out over and over again, eventually everybody's like, Oh man, this one really sound found sounded phoned in. And yeah. And and, I mean, yeah, it's weird. You know, I was thinking about that um, the other day. It's like, I don't, I don't want to hate on anyone that does that because maybe that's, maybe that's just that that's where they're at. That's what they want to do. That's how their creative gears work. Um, And that's how they best, express themselves and you know i i think that's 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 awesome um but yeah i mean i don't know i i just i take in so much music um and i get so excited about just uh, all these different things and possibilities um and i just love to challenge myself with like okay like what do i what do I kind of suck at and how can I just get better and make this a record? And, you know, like it's, I don't know, it's, it's fun, you know, it's, it's super cool. And, um, yeah, I, I've, I've really felt that like when I visit the back catalog of slow motion and hands, it, it's, it seems to me like that's, there's, there's been questions in between each record. Yeah, totally. And I think, um, I think this new one's interesting because I think, and I've obviously I've only heard the one song just like everybody else. Um, yeah, I'm not cool enough to get advanced album copies yet, but it is one of those, like, um, it is one of those things where, you know, 
I really, really, really enjoy obviously the 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 whole visual aesthetic of what I've seen. Um and the album is called um Influence. Yeah. Um so what uh what is it about influence that um hey Joe, cut that part out because I totally lost my train of thought mid mid sentence. <laughs> um my my bad. This is why we don't do it live. Uh, Thanks, Joe. No problem, dude. With the album being called Influence, uh, what was the uh, what was the thought process behind that? Or if there is a kind of theme uh, to the album, uh, what what would that be? What what can we kind of start digging into whenever we eventually do get lyrics? Um, what what theme are we looking for? Or is it going to be something dreadfully apparent that I'm missing? That's probably in like the release single already. No, um, you know it's a it's it's a dark record for sure. Um, and you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm still kind of coming around to processing the whole experience, to be honest. Um, you know, it, this record started two years ago is, is when we actually started recording um, a year and a half to two years ago. So it's, it's been forever in the making. Um, and it's been a burden, man. It's been it's been very, very, very hard. Uh, it's definitely unlike any other situation I've ever been in. I know every other record I've ever made has usually been within about a, a, a week to a week and a half time frame. Um, you know, I, I guess give me rest. We were able to stretch that out for a month. Um, so that's that's not exactly true. But uh, yeah, give me rest was about a month. Um, you know, work, I'd, I'd get off of work and then I'd drive to the studio and then we'd work from, you know, whatever, seven thirty at night to one in the morning. And then, you know, that was the first time I'd really had to balance like real life and making a record and spending that much time doing that, you know, but, uh, but this one, um, you know, it was just like, it just wouldn't, it, it didn't ever really build momentum. Like everything was a struggle. Everything was hard. Um, and uh, to rewind before recording, like just the writing process was unbelievably difficult because I was supposed to make this record in 2017, um, January 2017. And uh, what's interesting is there was supposed to be two EPs. So the laid low EP was going to be EP one. And that was going to be kind of this like, it's kind of like what my epic was doing at the time with kind of the heavier EP and the more chill EP. And we were kind of doing that same idea. So the laid low EP, which is the more chill EP was going to be first. And then we were going to do an EP that was, um, more aggressive. And, you know, we did the laid low one and ended up just not doing the second one. Cause it was just kind of like, it just didn't work out. It, it fell apart. And then, I was in a place um, personally where I was just a mess. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I coming out of laid low, there's some really sad stuff on laid low. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and I think that was me getting real close to peaking at like, I think the worst version of myself I've ever been. Um, and so, you know, we, uh, I couldn't write, I was supposed to write for this album and I couldn't do it. And then, uh, and I got a few tracks and threw them away, um, which sucks. You know, I mean, usually I don't ever like throw stuff away, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, when it came time to actually record and, and get in the studio and do this, um, we were about a month out from our uh, studio time. And uh, and I just had to cancel and pull the plug um, and figure out I've never in my life ever had to do something like that. Um, but it was one of those things where it's like, I have to get myself together because, uh, there's so many areas of my life that need attention that are literally on fire. Um, and making this record is just not important. And the songs I'm making don't sound like it's important to me. And recording is going to be just, you know, it's, it, this is nothing, n none of this, this doesn't mean anything to me, you know? Um, and so we canceled recording, uh, and I, I mean, I took a year off basically, um, you know, all of 2017, uh, this, this is my kind of writing room that I'm in right now. Um, I mean, I don't 
think I came into this room more than a handful of times in that year span because I was just afraid of it, you know, which is weird. It's a weird experience to go through. Like as a, as a artist, it's like, this is how I express myself. But I, I don't know why I was afraid of doing that. <laughs> um, it's strange. It's a weird place to be in mentally. Uh, and when we finally came around to begin writing, when I say we, I guess it was just me, but um, I started, you know, like I, I all, all this time, you know, face down, I was talking to Jason and, you know, he's wondering like, you know, hey, like, you know, what's going on? And I mean, he was, aware, you know, he's checking in and being a good friend. Yeah. Um, and uh, we kind of got to this point where I was like, hey, dude, OK, I'm, I'm writing. I don't know what it's going to what it's going to bring. If it's going to be any good, but I'm writing. Um, and I got pretty close to, you know, I don't know, 10, 10, 11 tracks or so. And then, um, called, uh, our drummer, Aaron, uh, who's just a freaking awesome killer drummer and killer producer and engineer and all of the above. And I just said, Hey man, I, I think, I think it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to do this. And he's like, really? Okay. Like, what do you want to start working on songs? You know? And I'm like, I think I do, you know, yeah. I, I think we can do this. And uh, we called our friend Nate um, Washburn, who's in Atlanta. He plays guitar in My Epic and has done a bunch of really great records, uh, like Household and uh, and My Epic Records. And uh, in any ways, uh, asked if he would be down to do it with us. And he was all in. And there you go. We've got the three musketeers, man. You know, so uh, we started making the record in December 2018. So, I mean, from January 2017 to January 2018, nothing happened. Um, and I would say it was maybe, you know, March, April 2018 that we that I, I got down into this room and started really writing. And uh, fast forward to Christmas of that year, December 2018, we started recording this record. Um, and yeah, I mean, so I just to answer your question, I kind of derailed for a minute, but. I feel like I set it up the right way. Uh, when it came time to visit this thing lyrically, um, you know, it was kind of like how I don't know what I have to say and I don't know how I'm going to say it. Uh, and it's weird because it's for me, the lyrics have always been sort of rooted in like a like a questioning, you know, my my faith. And they've all been somehow, somehow rooted in, in uh, you know, uh, my struggle with you know spirituality and things like that um and laid low diverted from that a little bit laid low felt less that and way more just like this is my life this is personal you know like this isn't like this doesn't have anything to do with me being angry you know with like with god or or questioning this or that it's like lyrically i'm just looking at things um like dude i i things are just falling apart around yeah. me, you know? And it wasn't like, a, I need to beg God for help kind of thing. It was just like, it was so much more like, uh, like, no, like this is, this is on me, you know, like <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta do something about this. Um, and, uh, and so with this record, um, you know, it, it addresses a lot of that time period. Um, and I didn't want to be overly, uh, you know, just like, like, uh, I don't want to be overly descriptive, um, and, and try and, you know, make it seem like, uh, like my own little personal journal or anything. Um, but I'll tell you this, when I got done, when the album was done finally, and, um, it got down to, we were, uh, I was approving the artwork and, you know, they send you the lyric sheet, right? Yeah. And I'm looking at it for any like, you know, spelling errors or whatever, if something's out of place. So I sat there and I read the lyrics to every single song with no music, with no real, you know, context of of, of whatever song right, right. I'm in at the time. I'm just reading an album's worth of lyrics straight out. And I got done with it. And I was just like, oh, my God, like, this is the saddest record I've ever made. And like, am, am I good? Like, are we, are we okay here? Like, <laughs> do I, do know? I need to call, do I need to call a counselor or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and, uh, and I mean, and it's all good. Like, you know, it's just like, 
there's just something that, that there's there's something really broken um in there that that came out on this album and it's not this big spiritual battle i, I i've i've got i don't i don't have that in me anymore i don't have this this huge like why why you know like i don't understand like i've i've become way more at peace with you know just knowing that it's always going to be um a, a, a questioning journey it's always going to i'm going to be in different seasons of life and uh you know i'm going to i'm going to take things as they come and um so i, I didn't have anything to uh, the the tone of the of the lyrics just kind of changed on this one and it was way more about like man this is what i'm dealing with right now you know um and so yeah it's it's cool man I, i'm i'm super stoked on it and um and i and the title influence just came from me questioning myself que- uh, asking myself the question of like why you know why was i like this why was i in this position why what caused that you know um and and looking around at the circumstances in my environment and people i was surrounding myself with and whatever it is but but why why did this happen you know it's it's like it's it's sorting through the wreckage really and i thought that influence was just the perfect thing to sum that up you know <laughs> and so anyways no it's cool i'm i'm a huge lyric guy it's my favorite uh it's my favorite aspect of music which is kind of weird um as a lot of music is written prior to lyrics being written <laughs> and things yeah. like that. But, um, yeah. but for me, it's, 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 it's a bit, definitely a big, uh, a, a big part of it. And, yeah. um, and that's something, that's something that I'm really going to be looking forward to, you know, getting the record in the mail. And, um, my first listen through is going to be with lyrics, you know? Yeah, man, it's cool. And it's funny because the song influence lyrically, I, it's not, uh, it's not super like, like I'm not spelling things out for anybody. You know what I mean? Um, it just kind of has a vibe. And I like that people can listen to it and sort of draw their own ideas. Um, but there's a, there's a few other tracks on there that are, that are way more blunt. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, so it's, it's interesting, man, lyrically. And so, and it's funny because even the sound of it too, um, Nate, the guy that, produced it nate washburn uh put that put out this little uh facebook post the other day about the record um just saying like hey this new song is out you know and hope you guys enjoyed or whatever but he really freaking nailed it uh with this where he said if you think you have a grasp on what this record will sound like just go ahead and throw your expectations away now (laughs) nice and it was my favorite it's my favorite little quote because it's so true. Like this album is very, very dense and it's a long windy road. Um, and then this first track is, is just a taste of it. And it, and it's, it's really, it's its own unique experience and there's no other track that sounds like it on the record. That's cool. No diversity is, is the thing, you know, on my other podcasts, all I do is I'll listen to a band's whole discography and then talk about it. And mm-hmm. the, so it's, it's, it's always refreshing, you know, cause with, with a lot of bands, it's very, um, or a lot of musicians rather, I should say, um, you can always kind of, you can always kind of predict the arc or you can kind of figure out like where, where things are going to go based on what you've heard before. And I've been, I've been pretty surprised, uh, at the output. So the prospect of listening to a record where I'm not going to necessarily know what's going on, uh, until it's going on, uh, is, is very very refreshing yeah and like i said i can't wait to hear it and um you know it's it's obviously you know uh it's it's obviously a a labor of love to have taken that long i was thinking about the fact you were telling me the time the time span and i was like dang so like he's been making this record basically as long as my podcasting career has been (laughs) you know like i started in early 2017 and have gone through like three years, three years of that grind, you know? And so it's just, it's, it's, it's funny just thinking of like, wow. And so 
Shane's over here doing a record. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, like that's oh that that's that's bananas, but it's also yeah. I think probably a benefit to it, right? Like in the sense that you had the time to really make all of the creative calls that you wanted to make and you didn't have to compromise anything. Yeah. It was an uphill battle the whole time. Um, unbelievably taxing, unbelievably challenging. And, you know, it's funny, like when I listen to it, it's maybe the, I don't know, I, I, I don't hear anything in it that I would change. You know, I don't hear anything in it that I'm like, oh man, I wish we could have done this or had a little bit more time on this. It's like, we very meticulously went through everything in a healthy way. You know, I don't, I don't think any of it was unhealthy. I think, you know, we really, we really spent a lot of great time trying to figure out what each song needed to be. Um, and it, it shows, man, when I listen to it from front to back, I'm just, I, I listen to it and I honestly think like, I, I can't believe we did this, you know, like it's just, it's like, it's so, so cool. And I'm so proud of it. And, you know, and, and, and for the, the fans of the band, I, I think they're going to be stoked too. And, and I hope they are. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it just makes it all super exciting. And, you know, I, I was ready to stop doing this band um, after the EP. I was, I was very okay with just being like, I think I'm done with this. And, um, you know, upon completing this album, it's weird. It, it feels like this is an entirely new band. Like it feels like this is an entirely new project. And, you know, Aaron, our drummer, Aaron Crawford and I and Nate, and it's like, I mean, we all, we all just want to do it again. You know, we all want to want to write again. And we all want to put ourselves through this, you know, throw ourselves back into the hell hole again to see what else we can come up with, you know? So it's really cool, man. It breathed new life into me and into this project. And I think, uh, um, man, it's worth a listen. So absolutely. Well, and I will definitely listen to it. And in wrapping up here, um, I'm going to just talk about a totally different record, uh, for a second. Um, yeah. what are your, what are your thoughts on this new hum record? Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, Oh my uh, God. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I think you can't see it, but there's a hum poster right back there. Oh yeah, I could see and it. It's an original poster uh, from 1998 oh. from a random show um, in uh, in Texas. Yeah. So my friend Josh found it for me and, and bought it. Um, but yeah, dude, I uh, man, I knew it was coming. I, I mean, hey, I know that they haven't put out a record in forever, but they also took their sweet time making this thing yeah. because I remember. So here's a fun fact. Um, Give me rest was actually supposed to be recorded with Matt Talbot, the singer of hum really at his studio, uh, earth analog um, in Illinois. So give me rest was actually supposed to be cut to two inch tape with Matt Talbot. Oh, um, and you know, the record would be a completely different record. Um, we wouldn't have all the glamorous production, you know, cool uh, sonic candy that Josh Barber, the producer of that record, he he added that stuff in there and just made it super cool. Yeah. But we wouldn't have all of that. Everything would be way more raw, you know, and it'd be an entirely different experience, um, which may have been really cool. Like, I, yeah. I don't know, but that was uh, one of my dreams is to be able to go there and record with Matt. And he put us on the schedule and, um, and I actually went to see him uh, at a show they played in St. Louis. Um, and he was talking about, this was 2011. I was there. And he was talking <laughs> about, Oh, are, at the St. Louis show. Yeah. That's where I'm from. St. Louis. Yeah. Oh dude, no freaking way. Yeah. You mentioned that, but I, I just forgot yeah. about it. No small world. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Um, so we were, uh, we were standing front row at that show, uh, me and one of my friends. Um, and it was incredible. Like, I mean, hum is just in, an incredible experience live, uh, especially if you're a fan of the band, like, Oh yeah. Most of their fans are like, I think anyways, like there's a lot of real diehard hum fans. Um, if you're a diehard hum fan and you get to experience that show, dude, it's 
incredible. And so, um, I've been fortunate enough to see them a couple times now, which has been killer. And I just remember talking to Matt at that show and him saying that they were going to potentially do another record. And I was like, no way, you know? I was going to ask you how you knew it was coming because I was completely blindsided by it. A lot of people were. Um, but like I said, I'm a freaking diehard dude. Like, Downward is Heavenward changed my life musically. Like, if you listen to Cube, the song Cube on Give Me Rest, that's a freaking hum riff, dude. Like, that is a hum riff. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, he talked about it then. And then over the years, um, they mentioned making new music or working on a record. And then they would po- they did exactly what we did for a while, where they were posting photos of them writing, you know, and everyone would get all hyped up. But then, you know, it's like this record seemed like it maybe was not actually going to happen. Um, and then, dude, I mean, they dropped that thing out of nowhere. And... Uh, I mean, I had this emotional moment of like, like, I'm not going to say that my eyes welled up a little because they certainly didn't. Um, But man, I I hit play and it was incredible. And I had I had a moment where I was like, am I listening to the best hum record ever made? Like this this can't be, you know, like I refuse (laughs) to believe that that this is this is it. And, uh, dude, it's just, it's insane. And, um, they, the the other thing too, is before this record came out, I want to say this is, wasn't, this was in like 20, oh, September, maybe September, 2019, but they went out and played, um, this, uh, I think it's called like Delos Deftones. It's a festival out in California that the Deftones do. And it was like Deftones, Gojira. Um, oh, I don't remember who else, but either way, uh, hum was on the bill and i remember seeing a video of them playing at that show because i was so curious i'm like what does it look like in front of like like in a baseball stadium you know what i mean right and they were on this little like side stage like they didn't give them the main stage or anything which is is a bummer but either way they gave them this like cool setup on a side stage and it was kind of during the day and um but they had all these really cool like leds in the back and uh but they played a new song which was Desert Rambler, which is on the new record. Yeah, okay. And dude, them playing that new song when I heard it, um, just through that freaking YouTube video. I mean, I immediately sent it to every one of my friends. And I was yeah. like, this is unreal. Like, if this actually doesn't get recorded, how sucky is that? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this, is, this is so badass. And uh, yeah, dude, I, it's it's such a great record. So and it's funny, like, too, there's all these people that didn't know about Hum that are hearing this record for the first time. And they're just like, they couldn't have come at a better time. They're just like, whoa, look, this band is crazy. You know, yeah. it's kind of fun, man. It's it's nuts that they can they can put out a record that, you know, uh, they can wait that long, drop this record out of nowhere. And it's just like, oh, my God, you know, they did it. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's uh, it's funny you said that. Like, oh yeah, I didn't have like I you know didn't have some tears in my eyes. I definitely did. By the like my first listen through, um, it was somewhere in the middle of Shapeshifter. I was like literally almost oh, like almost in tears. Like, like oh my god, like this is hitting me in every single like their their music is so textured from s- second to second. Like it just it just reaches into every emotion you've ever had. Oh yeah. You know, and you experience wonderful and terrible things all at the same time, just like and it just oh my god, like that that album like Shapeshifter is whenever it's funny, like I don't like for the album to end, so I'll listen to the whole thing yeah. and then I'll get to Shapeshifter and I'll repeat that song like five or six or seven yeah. times just because I refuse to let the record end. Yeah. And um it, oh it's it, just so it's, good. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous, man. And there's something there's just something like that I love so much about Matt Talbot's voice in Hum. Yeah. And it, it's it's essentially, most of the time, I, I, he actually sings a little bit more. Like, he explores a little bit more of his register on this, this record um, compared to past records. But essentially, Matt Talbot singing is just Matt Talbot talking. And, yeah. and it's awesome. You know, and, and most of the time you have no idea what he's talking about. Nope. 
And I'm completely okay with that. You know, if we want to sing about uh, jellyfish and rocket boosters, I'm way okay with that, man. Like, let's let's do that. (laughs) Because somehow it's emotionally rocking me. And that's incredible. (laughs) Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, it just it just it completely blew me away and caught me completely off guard. And that's why I talk about it to anybody that I think will listen, you know. So I saw that hum poster earlier. I was like, oh, I'm good. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we can have this talk. Oh, that's cool. So you actually did see that yeah. in the background. Well, I mean, and it would yeah, be awesome. it, it would be incredibly tone deaf of me to have listened to all the hands records and the yeah. uh, everything in slow motion and not like, oh, I don't know if he's ever even heard of this. Like, are you kidding me? You know, <laughs> like um, what's, what's funny is that our, our guitar player, Jarek in hands, um, he is the one that gave me that introduced me to hum. Um, I had uh, another friend of mine, Jason, not Jason at face down, but a, a different Jason, uh, showed me hum once in like 2008 and I don't think I was ready for it. Yeah. Um, I, I was able to find what was cool about it, but I, I, it's nothing that stuck. And then in like 2009, 10 or whatever, when, when hands was touring and Jarek, um, was on the road with us, he, we were at this gas station in Fallbrook, California. I, that's how big of an impact it had on me as I remember this clear as day. <laughs> we were at a gas station in Fallbrook, California, and I'm, you know, taking way too long to try and find like the perfect drink for the drive. And he just kind of looks over at me. And he's like, all right, dude, I'm going to give you an album and I want you to listen to it. And I don't recommend it to all my friends because I just don't think that they're going to get it. <laughs> but I think you're ready for this. And I go, okay, well, what is it? And he goes, well, it's a hum record. And I go, oh, yeah, well, Jason tried to show me hum, you know, like two years ago. And yeah, that was cool stuff. And he goes, okay, well, either way, I want you to listen to this record. And he gave me Downward is Heavenward. And I mean, I, it was, it's funny because I think there, I think that even speaks to the musical gap between creator and give me rest. Yeah. This discovery of hum, you know? (laughs) Totally. And, uh, I, just, I always thought that was really cool. So I got into hum basically through Hope's Fall. Um, yeah, as I, I grow, I'm a massive Hope's Fall fan as well. And um, yeah, Satellite Ears. Yeah. And Matt Talbot actually sang on a song on Satellite Ears. And I remember yeah. thinking, like, who is that? Because that's not their that's not their normal yeah. singer, you know. Like, Isn't well, that funny? Yeah. I, I thought that same thing. Like, cause I, I was listening to Satellite Years and what what was that? 2002, maybe. Yeah. Yep. And I remember always hearing his part come in and thinking like, who is that? You know, but I never, I never took the time. I was, it's 2002. So I don't really care who it is, but it's so funny that later on I, I discover like, wait a minute, like Matt Talbot recorded this record and sang on it. Like that's Matt. Hum. It was just like this mind blowing, like, Oh Yeah crazy you know like it was just it was awesome so and a few years later you're like man i could have had that on <laughs> yeah well and i honestly that's what directed me to, to to seek him out for give me rest was obviously this new discovery of hum but like wait this this dude has a recording studio that's all analog and and at the time we were being surrounded by bands that were like i remember being on tour with one band that was like legitimately bragging about how he just got to go into the studio, play his drums loosely to a click track. And even though he like he, he was bragging about this, he's like, yeah, dude, I just went in and played and the click was on. But, you know, I just did my thing and whatever. And the best part is when I was done, the guy just snapped everything into place and all of it sounded perfect. Oh, I was like, why would you no, brag and, about that? <laughs> but that's the thing is like, I mean, that's a that's a reality, right? That, that's no, a I mean, yeah, that, obviously. That, but like, that's a that's a reality that we live in, but it's like, but I mean, the way that he said it, it was just kind of like, like, it wasn't like for the benefit of the record. I mean, in his case, it probably was for the benefit of the record. Right. But still, I was just kind of like, I just immediately got like this, like, well, we actually want to play like, (laughs) you know what? We're just going to go cut this to two inch tape. You know, we're going to do this with Matt Talbot, you know, and we're going (laughs) to, and and that's kind of where this whole thing came from and uh yeah it's kind of funny so but i just hated that idea that this guy got away with it you know what i mean he just got to go play sloppy drums and then check out for the day right 
producer engineer guy had to sit there and map all of that stuff out. Of course, he's playing all of the impossible fills, you know what I mean? And just yeah. like, just getting away with it. And I was just like, man, we're not going to do this, you know? So anyways, oh, that's that cool. was the that's that was the thought. But we never got to do it. So uh, what could have been? Uh, what could have been? Yeah. But uh, Shane, thank you so much, man, for taking all this time out. I'm sure I ran a little bit longer than than normal. But, you know, I this oh, this all good. This is a lot of fun. And I, I'm I'm. I, I, this is probably one of my, it actually is kind of a bucket list interview for me because I, I just have always been a huge fan, um, of, of your music, be it, you know, be it hands, be it everything in slow motion. And, um, it's always affected me personally. And that's, that's awesome. And I know you didn't do it for me, but I appreciate it. You know? <laughs> Dude, that means a lot. Thank you so much, man. So I really appreciate that. And, and it, it, and if you hate the new record, you can tell me it's oh, fine. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let it's, you know. It's fine. I I'll, I'll accept it. So I probably won't let you know like that's shitty, right? Like, no, it's like okay. you get the you messages, you know, cause, cause I've, I've, I've said, Hey, you've got it. You're like, you, you've got my, uh, my permission. So, okay. Yeah. If it was anyone else though, right. Then, yeah. You know, <laughs> screw off. Right. So Exactly. <laughs> And that was my chat with Shane Oshner of Everything in Slow Motion. It went kind of long. I, I do not apologize for that one bit. This was a bucket list interview for me. I love everything Shane's put out up to this point. And if you love it too, definitely make sure to go to facedown.com and pre-order Everything in Slow Motion Influence. I think this record's going to be awesome, and I can't wait to hear it and give you guys a full report. That pretty much does it for this episode of Discuss Metal. If you guys like the podcast, make sure to subscribe on whatever podcast app that you're listening to this on. Definitely reach out to us on Facebook at facebook.com slash discography discussion. You can follow us on Instagram under Discuss Metal. We are also under Discuss Metal on Twitter. You can send us an email at show at gmail.com. With any comments, questions, concerns, band requests that you want to hear us talk about on Discography Discussion, interview requests, uh, anybody you want to hear us talk to on Discuss Metal, make sure to let us know. Also, make sure to stop by our official group on Facebook, the Discography Discussion official group, as well as our Discord server. There'll be a link in the show notes that'll take you right to our Discord server, where we are just chatting with listeners of the show day and night. It doesn't matter. Worldwide. It's a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys checking out Discuss Metal, and there will be more to come. Rap.